Okay, so in this video, we will determine whether the series converges or diverges using the alternating series test. So we're summing the terms of the given sequence. This is a n. And when we want to apply the alternating series test, we simply have to look at the positive part of our sequence, ignoring the term that gives the alternation. So b n is n over 3n squared plus 20. As n goes from 1 to infinity, bn is clearly always positive. And if we are to have a convergent series, we have to prove that bn is eventually decreasing and bn converges to 0 as n goes to infinity. Now here, it is not obvious that bn is eventually decreasing, as bn is the ratio of an increasing function over an increasing function. So here to prove rigorously that bn is eventually decreasing, we have to look at the differentiable function 3x squared plus 20, so x over 3x squared plus 20, and if we can show that this function is eventually decreasing, then the discrete sequence will also be eventually decreasing. And the easiest way to show that a function is eventually decreasing is to show that when x is large enough, the derivative of the function is negative, as the derivative is the rate of change of the function. To differentiate x over 3x squared plus 20, we have to use the quotient rule. So derivative of the numerator is 1 times our denominator, 3x squared plus 20, minus the numerator, x, times the derivative of our denominator, which is 6x, over the denominator all squared. We can simplify. So we'll have here 3x squared minus 6x squared, so negative 3x squared plus 20, or if you prefer, 20 minus 3x squared, all over x squared plus 20 squared. And now we're asking quite simply, if x is large enough, will the derivative be negative? Well, if you look at your denominator, it's a square, so it's always positive. So this will not affect the sign of the fraction. And look now at your numerator. As we let x approach positive infinity, so as we let x become bigger and bigger and bigger, clearly 20 minus 3x squared will approach negative infinity, which is clearly negative. And so you see when x is big enough, the fraction will consist of a negative number over a positive number, therefore it's clearly negative. And so you see when x is big enough, the derivative of our function is negative, therefore the function is decreasing when x is large enough, therefore bn is eventually decreasing. So the first condition is met. The second condition, which now will be much easier, is to prove that the limit of bn as n goes to infinity is equal to 0. Well, bn, if you recall, is simply n over 3n squared plus 20. And now here, of course, you have an infinity over infinity case, so you could think of using L'Hopital's rule, but we can do much simpler. The largest power of n is n squared on the bottom, n on top, so you could do 1 over n over 1 over n, or 1 over n squared over 1 over n squared. So let's look at 1 over n squared over 1 over n squared. This is simply 1, so we're not cheating here. And now we'll have what we'll see to be a very simple limit. So we'll have 1 over n on the numerator over 3 plus 20 over n squared. 
So as n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0. 20 over n squared goes to 0, so we're left with 0 over 3, which is clearly 0. So our two conditions are met. By proving that the derivative of the continuous analog is negative when x is very large, this proves that bn is eventually decreasing, and as n tends to infinity, bn approaches 0. So the two conditions are satisfied, and so the initial alternating series converges by the alternating series test. And that's it.